Hello there, this video will cover installing one of my favorite games, Go, on Linux. Go is a game that people have been playing for over 2,000 years. This will include a GUI and command line version. Also, these programs will work on all devices, including Androids, Chromebooks, and PCs. This is a Media Blitz format that will allow me to share topics faster and keep pace with frequently updated topics. My channel focuses on adding the power of Linux to your Android, Chromebook, or PC without the need to root or remove your system. Additionally, I cover cross-platform topics. My playlists are available from the homepage on my YouTube channel and are organized by operating system and cross-platform topics. To make it easier to follow along with my videos, I include the full written instructions in the pinned comment. So if you scroll down to the comments of the current video you are watching now, you will see the top pinned comment containing the written instructions. To see the whole comment, click on Read More. Any updates will be noted at the top of the pinned comment. Note that you can copy and paste the notes into a text file like I have here with the mousepad text editor. Or, if you're feeling fancy, we can copy and paste the notes into a tiddlywinky notebook, also known as Flexible Offline Searchable Notes. Here, I pressed the backtick key from the top left of the keyboard so that there are three backticks before and after the text. This will apply monospaced block formatting. Keep in mind that you can modify the notes however you'd like, whether that's formatting, adding images, or changing what's in the notes. For more information on TiddlyWiki, I recommend watching my TiddlyWiki videos. That concludes the intro, now onward to the video. To install a GUI version of the game Go, I will be using Synaptic Package Manager. So to open Synaptic, I am going to go to the menu, and in the Preferences category, I'm going to click on Synaptic Package Manager. When Synaptic is open, we can click on the Reload button from the top left to update the list of available software. When Synaptic is done reloading, we can click on the Search button from the top right, and then we can search by name for Kigo. When Kigo comes up, we can right-click on it, select Mark for installation, then we can click on the Mark button for the additional required changes. Finally, to install Kigo, we can click on the Apply button near the top left, and then we can click on the second Apply button to confirm the install. When the install is done, we can click on the Close button in the Changes Applied window. Note that install errors for Android's devices can be ignored. Now that we are done installing Kigo, we can close out of Synaptic. Now to open up Kigo, we can go to the menu, and in the Games category, we can click on Kigo. For the LXDE desktop, if the top window border is not visible, then we can maximize the window by right-clicking on Kigo from the bottom panel, and then select Maximize. Keep in mind, it is okay if part of the window is cut off at the bottom, the board and the right panel will resize once we start playing the game. From the Game Setup panel on the right side, we can select the board size, set the handicap and comey points to balance the game to our liking, and then we can check whichever color we want the computer to play as well as the difficulty. If we'd like, we can even have the computer play itself. Now whenever we are ready to start playing, we can click on the Start Game button from the top left. Once we start the game, the board will resize to fit the screen. Here I had the computer play itself. Later in this video, I will cover making everything full screen along with customizing the background. When we are finished with a game and want to see the ending score, then we can click either of the Finish Game buttons that are available from the top and near the bottom right. To start a new game, we can click the New button from the top left, and then we can set up our game and start playing. Finally, in Kiko, we can save a game by doing Ctrl S on our keyboard. Then from the window that comes up, we can choose where to save the file and set the file name. It is important that the file name ends in .sgf. Once we've done all that, we can click on the Save button. Now to load a game we have saved, we can do Ctrl-O on our keyboard, 
And then from the window that comes up, we can select the .sgf file that has the game we saved. And then we can click on the open button. Finally, we can click the start game button to continue playing the game that we loaded. Next, to play the command line version of Go, we can use GNU Go. If GNU Go is not already installed, then you can execute sudo space apt space install space GNU Go space dash y. Then to start up GNU Go, we can simply execute GNU Go. In GNU Go, to place a piece on the board, we can type in a letter followed by a number, and then we can press enter. By default, the computer will be playing the O pieces, which represent white, and we will be playing the X pieces, which represent black. The parentheses on the board emphasize the last piece that was placed on the board. To exit out of GNU Go, we can type in exit, and then we can press enter. Here I played some GNU Go from a full screen Xterm terminal. For documentation on GNU Go, we can execute GNU Go space dash dash help. Additionally, for more detailed documentation, we can instead execute man space GNU Go. Here we can get more information about the different options we can use with GNU Go. For more documentation about Kigo, we can go to the help menu in Kigo, and then we can select Kigo Handbook. Here we can get more information about the Kigo program, such as shortcuts. Additionally, there is apps.kde.org slash Kigo, which is the homepage for Kigo. For more overall information about Go, we can search for Go on Wikipedia. The game Go was found to be useful in the study of artificial intelligence, and there's even a whole documentary about it available through YouTube. Also, there's a variety of Go boards available from stores, such as Amazon. Now I'm going to cover how to set a custom background in Kigo. To do that, we can open up a terminal, and from a terminal we can first execute cd space slash usr slash share slash Kigo slash themes. This will take us to the file path where the Kigo themes are located. From here we can execute ls to list the files and folders. After that, we are going to execute sudo space cp space kigo underscore plane dot svgz space purple dot svgc. This will create a copy of the plane kigo theme and it will be named purple dot svgz. Keep in mind you can name the file whatever you would like. After that we are then going to execute sudo space cp space plane dot desktop space purple dot desktop. This will create a copy of the plain dot desktop file and it will be named purple dot desktop. Again, you can set the name of the dot desktop file to whatever you would like. Now that we've done that, we can execute ls again to list the files and folders. And here we should see the purple dot svgz and purple dot desktop files. From here we are going to edit the purple.svgz file by executing sudo space inkscape space purple.svgz. For Androids, we can execute the same command except without sudo. This will open the purple.svgz file with Inkscape. Inkscape is an app that we can use to edit and create SVG images. SVG images are images that can be scaled to any size without losing the resolution. If Inkscape is not already installed on your device, then you can execute sudo space apt space install space Inkscape space dash y. I will have my videos that cover Inkscape linked in the pinned comment for this video. Now when we have the Kigo theme open with Inkscape, we can click the OK button in the Convert Legacy Inkscape file window. To see the whole picture, we can then repeatedly click the zoom out button that has a dash in it on the bottom of the Inkscape window. After that, we can click on the blue square background, and then we can select a color from the bottom of Inkscape. For this example, I selected a purple color, so I will have a purple background. Once we've done that, we can go to the File menu, select Save, and then we can close out of Inkscape. 
Now from the terminal, we are going to execute sudo space mousepad space purple dot desktop. For Androids, we can execute the same command except without sudo. This will open the purple.desktop file with the mousepad text editor. If mousepad is not configured for roots, then we can configure it by going to the Edit menu and select Preferences. Then in the window that comes up in the View tab, we can check Show Line Numbers, Highlight Current Line, and Highlight Matching Brackets. From here we can also uncheck Use System Monospace Font, and then we can select the current font being used, where we can then adjust the font size. Once we have selected our desired font size, we can click on the Select button. Finally, from the View tab, we can click on the Color Scheme drop-down, and then we can select a color scheme. For my example, I will be selecting Cobalt. Next, we can go to the Editor tab, and from here we can set the tab width to 4. Finally, we can go to the Window tab, and then under Toolbar, we can check Show Toolbar. From here, we can then click the Style drop-down, select Text Below Icons, and after that, if we'd like, we can click the Icon Size drop-down, and then select Large Toolbar if we want larger icons. Once we are done configuring Mousepad, we can close out of Mousepad Preferences. Now from this file, we can go to the second line, and then change the name from plain to whatever we would like to name our theme. For my example, I will be naming this theme purple. Lastly, we can scroll down to the end of the file, and on the second to last line that starts with file name, we can change kiko underscore plain dot svgz to be the name of the svg file we edited earlier. So for my example, my SVG file was called purple.svgz, which is what I will type in here. Once we have made those changes, we can go to the file menu from the top left, select save, and then we can close out of mousepad. Now if you are still running Kiko, you will need to restart Kiko. Once we have restarted Kiko, we can go to the settings menu from the top, select configure Kiko, then in the window that comes up, we can go to the Themes tab, and then from here we can select the custom theme we created. After that, if we need to, we can click on the Apply button, and then we can click on the OK button. So now we have applied a custom background to Kigo. Now how fun is that? Finally, I am going to cover how to maximize Kigo as much as possible. Now in the LXDE desktop for Chromebooks and PCs, we can do Alt F11 on our keyboard to make a window full screen. Alternatively, for all devices that have the LXDE desktop, we can instead hide the bottom panel and remove the window border. To hide the bottom panel, we can right-click on the bottom panel, select Panel Settings, then in the window that comes up, we can go to the Advanced tab, and under Automatic Hiding, we can check Minimize Panel when not in use. Once we've done that, we can close out of Panel Preferences. For Chromebooks, you may want to move the Chrome OS bottom shelf to either side so it's easier to access the LXDE bottom panel. To do that, we can right-click on the bottom shelf, and under Shelf Position, we can select left or right. So now we can easily access both the LXDE bottom panel and the Chrome OS shelf by moving our mouse to either the bottom or side of the screen. Now to get rid of the window border, we can right-click on the window border from the top, and then select on slash decorate. Now to restore the bottom panel and the window border, we can first move our mouse to the bottom of the screen to reveal the bottom panel, right-click the bottom panel, Select Panel Settings, then in the window that comes up, we can go to the Advanced tab, and this time, under Automatic Hiding, we can uncheck Minimize Panel when not in use. After that, we can close out of Panel Preferences. Now to restore the window border, we can do Ctrl Q on our keyboard to close Kigo, then we can start Kigo Backup, which will restore the window border. In addition to making the window full screen, we can also close some extra components in Kigo to maximize our Go experience.
To do that, we can go to the Settings menu in Kiko, and under Toolbars shown, we can uncheck Main Toolbar and Move Toolbar. This will get rid of the buttons from the top of Kigo. Also, after starting a game, we can click the Close buttons from the top right of the Information and Moves windows that are on the right side. Now to restore those extra components we closed in Kigo, we can go back to the Settings menu, and under Toolbars shown, we can check Main Toolbar, and then we can check Move Toolbar. After that, we can also restore the Information and Move windows by going to the Settings menu, and under Dockers, we can check Information, and then after that, we can check Moves. So now we know how to maximize Kigo to get a more immersive experience. Companion books to my series of videos are available. I will have those linked in the pinned comment. And that's all for this video, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon!